Welcome to the House of Ham. I am Bob, WV7W. If you've been around my channel for a while, you know that I like portable CW operations. And I'm also a bit of a Morse code key junkie. Admitting you have a problem is the first step to recovery. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, today I'm going to go over this little gem here designed by Adam K6ARK. Adam is a great asset to the ham radio maker world. In addition to being a ham, I am also a maker. And I feel one of the best tools for ham radio is a 3D printer. And this key is almost 100% 3D printed, except for the jack, some screws, and a couple pieces of wire. It's all 3D printed. Two things surprised me once I printed this thing out. One is how small it is. Look at it compared to my C.W. Morse pocket paddle and the C.W. Morse Poda soda paddle. It's tiny. Second, and even more amazing, is how well it works. It is truly a work of art, Adam. Adam has graciously gives these 3D files away for free. So if you have a 3D printer, or at least know someone who does, you too can have one of these cool little keys. The first thing you need to do is download either the STL files, or if, like Adam and I, you happen to have a Prusa Mark III, you can just download the G-code file that has all three parts in one file. I have included links to Adam's files on printables, and I've also included links to the needed parts on Amazon. Or you can also get those from Adam's printables page as well. Your choice. The parts are an eighth inch stereo jack, and I really recommend you get the exact one Adam specifies as the shield pin goes under the panhead screw, so length matters. Speaking of that, you'll need an M3 four millimeter long panhead screw. And you'll also need two M3 four millimeter long grub screws. I ordered the ones that Adam listed, but there was a really long lead time for those, so I ordered a kit that had a bunch of different sizes. I figured I could use them for other things as well. I've listed those below too. I also recommend that you go with the Nichrome 36 gauge wire that Adam lists. I tried magnet wire as well as some other strands from some 16 gauge wire and, and they all broke. The Nichrome seems to work really well. Now you need to print the files. It is important to use PETG and not PLA as it needs to be able to flex. And according to Adam, PLA will break. I printed the parts using Adam's G-code file, and it prints all three parts one after the other on a single bit. Once you have the parts you need, you need to prepare the stereo jack by soldering a few inches of nichrome wire to each of the shorter leads of the jack. I used about three inches for each, so I had plenty to work with. I inserted the wire from the inside of the lugs so the wire goes towards the middle. I don't know that that works any better, but I figured it'd be less of a bend radius on the wire. Before you proceed, you want to flex the paddle handles back and forth a bit to loosen them up. This will give it a better and looser feel. Next, I threaded the wires into the little holes next to the screw holes. And then I then push the jack into the back of the paddle and put the retraining nut on. Here is where I deviate a bit from how Adam intended. I pulled the wire back through the hole so it comes back towards the inside of the paddles. I found that if I threaded the grub screw in enough to have a very close spacing, which is what I prefer, then it gets past the wire and no longer makes contact. By threading it back through, that problem goes away. You could also use longer grub screws, but the next length up in my kit was 10 millimeters, which was way too long. What I do next is thread each grub screw into each hole until it's flush with the inside, and then trim off the excess wire. After that, you can press on the, the paddle on the base, and then can install the panhead screw so that it's tight down on the jack look. Before you put the top on, I would recommend that you adjust the screws so they are where you want them and test the key with a radio or a keyer to make sure it works. I tested mine with my Morse Arena.
once everything is good, you can press the top on and you're ready to go. In addition to the grub screw holes for the contacts for the paddle, there's also these other holes that are intended to be used to increase the tension. I didn't use them because I like the lighter touch, but if you want a tighter feel, you can insert grub screws in there and tighten those down. I have to say, I'm very impressed with this thing. Kudos to you, Adam, and thank you for providing this to the ham radio community. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Also, consider hitting the bell icon so you get notified of my future videos. Until next time, 73.